Hello and welcome back to another episode of or well, the inaugural episode of uh, Build Our Business with the Disgruntled Octopus. And today we're actually um, we're doing it a little bit different. We haven't got Grumpy Granny today. We've got Grumpy Jackie. So hello, hello. Jackie. Hello, Octo. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good, good. So basically a little bit of background for those that are probably wondering what the hell's going on <laughs> is that we're actually building a business. So we are looking at probably not Jackie and myself, but we as in the collective. So the disgruntled octopus being the uh, disgruntled overlord that he is, is building a um, somewhat of a print on demand business at the stage. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to do a complete set through or a walkthrough for a print on demand business. The, the challenges and all the different things that go in between uh, with running a business. And before we get into that series, we're actually um, lucky enough to have Jackie on. So Jackie is actually... Um, I suppose she runs her own company. She's a co-founder of Loot in the Boot. Is that correct, Jackie? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, basically... Yep, sorry. No, that's right. No, that's fine. Yeah, so basically, uh, Jackie and I have known each other for a little bit. We, we do talk behind the scenes. Uh, so I've actually invited her on, and begrudgingly she came on <laughs> against her will uh, to basically have a bit of a chat about her business. So what I'll do is I'll just give an overview. So Jackie's running a business at this stage. She's looking at getting into designer toys, which is something very similar to what we both collect behind here. Um, so mischief toys and all those different things. And realistically like whilst i suppose that you know designer toys are a bit different to print on demand products as a lot of the ones we're looking into for this series is that this, you know similar situations happen from a business perspective and that's what i want to kind of i don't want to get like for like on on the show when we do discuss people so i want to talk to jackie about her business um in a couple of weeks we'll probably have ethan rushok on as he's the, the accountant so basically he's reached out for us to all those different things but like i said is that Every business has um, individual you know, ups and downs and all those different things. And all the different businesses, you know, regardless of you know, their print on demand or their eBay businesses or you know, design a toy company such as Jackie's, has very similar problems and all these different things. And like Jackie and I were talking beforehand is that the more you talk about things and learn off each other and use mentors and all these different things, uh, the easier things become. And you know, <laughs> you're better off cheating and just getting through problems. Don't reinvent the wheel. So without further ado, Jackie, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, about uh, Loot in the Boot. Yeah, all right. So um, Loot in the Boot has been around for, I'm going to say, since 2013, roughly, off and on. Um, I started by selling gaming loot from a, a car boot sales. Basically, that's how it started. So that, that's where the name comes from. Uh, I wanted to have a bit of a, a different flair to it, so I had an artist draw up a logo that is a kangaroo pirate um, with a treasure chest. And the treasure chest has toys and stuff in it, so it, it kind of loses the fact that we're focused on toys and treasures and all kinds of stuff, and, and our story behind it was we'll travel over the place and get random things and, and try and sell it from there, yep. Um, yep. try and get unique items. So because I do have a full-time job, this was a side hobby, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, now my full-time job might change in the near future. So now the focus is more on loot in the boot and, and where I want to go with that. Uh, so from there, done a bit of everything, you know, selling on eBay, uh, markets, a lot of markets. That, that's kind of where the speciality was, was markets. Um, and now becoming more of a hermit and more of the online sales and everything else and now specialising in our own pins to then build up to a figure. So yeah, yeah. That, that's excellent. No, it's excellent. So uh, I suppose we'll, we'll rewrite it, rewind it. Like, sometimes I have problems speaking. <laughs> we, we put it down to being an octopus out of water. So yeah, obviously a lack of oxygen normally yeah you know, takes its toll on me. But I suppose going back to the markets, right? So you know, so when you said that you're selling gaming loot and all those different things, where were you actually sourcing this stuff from? Were you getting it locally? Or were you importing it? Or it was a combination of everything. So you get it cheap somewhere put a bit of a markup on it, people are still getting a deal, I'm getting money, you know, it's sort of built that way. Yeah. And then you had um, Loot Crate as well back yep. in, the, in the day. So a lot of random stuff from Loot Crate did extremely well at, at the market. So like, oh, we can't, we've never seen this before, we can't get them. I'm like, well, if you subscribe, you get it every month. But anyway, sure. So, mm. and I wasn't making millions, obviously, <laughs> but it was still, there you go, yep. <laughs> but it was still um, products that were, were selling and it was, I'd make money back to the store, plus I'd make a little bit extra. So it was pocket money, pocket change, and enough to keep reinvesting and building and, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. Yeah, and I suppose, yeah. And what my questioning was before we went live is that, 
like I said previously in a in a podcast, and I did tell Jackie this, I gave my my tentacle of disapproval um, before we started was that you know like my stance and yeah like everyone's stance is different. So I only <laughs> bank is that you kind of want to you know make yourself a generalized different thing, and like that's what the the loot and the boot conversation came up for is because. To me, that sounded very resellery, <laughs> knowing that, you know, like, you know, Jackie had done dabbled in some reselling before is like, you know, what the basis of the company is. And, but I, I suppose it's good that, you know, you've had that exposure to, you know, customer service. You've had that exposure to, you know, face fronting things. Did you ever get to go to like, um, I'm just going to use Comic Con as an example because I don't really know what you, like conventions, I suppose, where you actually, yeah, like. Not, not as a store holder, no. Um, I was getting, did get invited to the uh, Toy Fair in Melbourne and all that kind of stuff because started, we started looking at a, um, make it a toy business. So I do have a lot of collectible toys that I've bought from wholesalers. So mm-hmm. not just whatever dodgy stuff I can get, it's actually legit stuff. So I still have those accounts and everything as well. As I, that is still somewhere in the distance. Um, a lot of stock I need to get rid of. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I haven't um, done cons or anything yet. But yep. That would be more with the new product line than what we used to do. Yeah, <laughs> and I suppose, and we will we'll, we'll get to the product line because like, I'm not going to lie, I, <laughs> I'm actually quite curious to see how this plays out, right? Like, yeah, and you know, like a lot of people, yeah, accuse the octopus as being a misogynist and every other name under the sun. But I'm quite curious, and like I said before, is and we will get into you know total uh, social media and all these different spec- prospects and all these different things. But I suppose, do you have a fail safe for? Uh, I suppose that the, if this business doesn't go as successful as you were planning, or yeah, you know, do you have all your eggs in one basket? All these different things. No, so so for us, we're using um, what do you call it, expended funds. You know, funds that we don't need for anything else. So it, it, it's not actually hurting us paying rent or anything like that. It, it is purely a side business. I don't expect mm-hmm. it to become the main business. I expect it to keep my mind active, if that yeah. makes sense. So yeah, it, that's it's. It. Yeah, with, with my current current job, it's pretty full on, as mm. you know what it is. Um, and changing that up and, and stopping doing that, I still need to do something. Um, yeah, well, that's right. And it, it's yeah. not obviously as full on as world domination, like yeah, a, a certain true. eight foot handsome octopus such as myself is trying to do. But but yeah, no. But like I said, that you know, you have um, we have had you know conversations behind the scenes, and yeah, you know, and you'll. Yeah, part of the reason why I'm potentially launching one of the print on demand products we we're talking about. Yeah, you know, like I said, it's purely, you know, this is what networking is very important from a yeah you know, from a business perspective. Even like yeah, you know, where like I was saying before is that yeah, you know, I'm probably focusing on print on demand and making it like a little yeah you know, side project merchandise store um, and see how that evolves from there. But yeah, you know, just speaking to you in you know in conversation and setting up this, you you predict you. You potentially give me probably another product I can I can look into and have a look from that perspective. So, yeah, like I said, there is there is grounds of working across different business models and different you know different structures and different outcomes of that business. So yeah, obviously that I wouldn't go down the path of you know releasing figures myself, but that's not to say that yeah the problems that Jackie comes across or the yeah the wins that Jackie comes across can't be necessarily stuff that I drag across to my business to say, hey, well, look, you know, she got you know, tripped up on this. I'm going to be very mindful of this, all those different things. Because, you know, realistically, a lot of our products come out of China, right? So I dare say that that's potentially where your figure is going to come. Um, it's going to be a lot of my print-on-demand figures are going to come from as well. So, Yeah, we, we did look at um, Australian manufacturers for the figure. Too, ex- too um, expensive. But no one really does it. No one advertises they do it. And when they mm. do advertise on their web, it's just one little line. Like, oh, do you really do it or not? You're just trying to get a hook in. Um, so yeah. it probably would be too expensive. It wouldn't be comparable. But we, we thought that might take away the language barrier issues and getting it across what we actually want clearly. And then mm. also adding the whole made in Australia would be awesome. But I just don't think it's plausible. And No. It, as much as I, I would – and much as oh, – there's a cat in the background. <laughs> <laughs> There's an exploding kittens uh, TV show coming out. Have you seen that yet? Have you seen the trailer no. for that? No. <laughs> no, I, I get sidetracked really easily. Yeah, grumpy granny always goes mad at me. But the the fact of the matter is, is that you're you're hundred percent correct. Is that you know like the, the language barriers and all these different things that are coming in things. But realistically, that price is you know a quarter of what you could potentially you know make a model for in Australia. Yeah, you know, it's gonna it's gonna win out every time, and this is something that people need to be really aware of. Is that you know, 
you're running a business and this is what i have across you know people that i speak to on a daily basis from an ebay perspective and also from facebook and all these different things is that you're not doing it for for shits and giggles <laughs> you're, you're trying to do it profit right you're still trying That's to make right. money you're trying to make a win and we, we want high quality stuff but we don't want to pay high quality prices, right? <laughs> well, that's right. Well, the thing is, where yeah, we make the money from this? Well, that's right. Well, the thing is, though, that it's still, you know, like the product would be negligible, right? So regardless if it's made in Australia or it's made in China, the end result's going to be the same. Right? It's like eventually you'll get to the point where it's all those different things. It's just that price point. And it's not comparable and not, not sustainable to run it from an Australian perspective. But because, you know, theoretically, you know, your price point from China might be able to sell the figure for, you know, $50, for example. Uh, whereas if you did it in Australia, you're probably looking at maybe $100 or $125 once you're taking those considerations. And, and people well. lose interest in that, right? Um, well, we, that, we also, sorry, we just looked at Taiwan and Japan. We, we've been looking okay. around all the countries, if it makes sense. Um, China does lead the race in that perspective at this point in time. So hmm. no surprises there really at the moment. Yeah, well, that's right. And that's something that people aren't aware of is that, you know, like regardless of, you know, I suppose their, their perceived alliances or other, that you really need to look at it from a business perspective. Yeah, you, know, you really need to take that political divide out of it <laughs> and go, hey, what's what's really the best of my business? What's going to make my business grow and all these different things? So unless, yeah, unless you're doing like, um, you know, a, a digital product or a, <clears throat> excuse me, or a, um, a consulting business, yeah, you know, any any physical product, and I dare say, like ninety nine point nine percent of the products out there are made made in China. So that's something that, you know you need to be mindful if you are pursuing <laughs> making making something per se. But I suppose that, um, and you know, obviously, you went to to markets and all these different things. You were you do have um, wholesale accounts, which is good. I dare say, through Icon, you got accounts through. No, no, I don't have Icon. I um, we've got modern brands, and we've got. Um, Let's play games and a few other little littler ones. Um, mm. But modern brands had a lot of uh, preschool toys and other kinds of toys like that, which is an area that I was looking at. Um, yeah. And then we had obviously let's play games where we're looking at TCG and Magic the Gathering, all those kinds of things. And that is a whole other world which I, I just can't keep up with. And I'm like, nah, okay, <laughs> I'm not going well, to go into that kind of way. It becomes very cutthroat in those in those niches as well. Like, yeah, we're, we're talking does. about, you know, I, before we went live, I was watching um, the Gasso cast, which is, you know, responsible for these figures behind me. Yeah, you know, so uh, Chris and Heather. So they were talking about today that Funko's got a new CEO, which was basically <laughs> the, the one that was running pretty much uh, Magic the Gathering and, um, you yeah, know, Dungeons and Dragons and all those different things. But the thing is, they, they lost a lot of their consumer base and lost their customer base. And, that trickles down to you know to the people who are actually holding the product because you know if you're buying it for ten dollars and you can only sell it for seven or eight dollars you're not going to be in business for very long so these are the things you <laughs> you got to be very mindful of you almost got to have like a a temperature check of all the different yeah. products you're selling so <coughs> excuse me i just want to <clears throat> go back to print on demand first right you want to talk about print on demand for a second yep so we actually had a few samples done with a print on demand company um because i was looking at merchandise i don't want to hold merchandise but i want to have it available yep. uh with our, our character t-shirts and and jumpers and whatnot and i had this first lot come in now the quality is decent you know i've got a couple of samples here um for example with this this kid's shirt if you can see it there mm. so screen printed really nice quality and for kids it's true to size right it's yep. perfect yep. um then i had some adult stuff made and one of the, this is a sample. So the T-shirts, I've got a couple of different sizes because I want to see if they were consistent with their sizing, um, and they're not. Mm. <laughs> so my concern with print-on-demand, which is just a helpful tip for anybody, is it, the site I was going through is US pricing. So you need to remember that yep. it's US dollars, not Australian. Forget forget that you're thinking Australian dollars. The shipping, um, it's cheaper shipping when you do a bulk order. So you, you could do pre-orders and stuff, etc. But the sizing was a big concern for me. So mm. two XL t-shirts next to each other, one looked three XL and one looked L. So it was like, yeah. well, and trying them on it, it's just all over the place. So although I love the way I can print, do all over print with these shirts, I'm not liking that I can't rely on the quality or the sizing of it. So that's an area that, yeah, still working so on. I, I, I suppose, 
with with your print on demand, and I'm not trying to pry too much into your business. Are you no. using China as a supplier? Or are you using it, it is China? Local... Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, I, when what the the shirts that we want to do um, with all over prints, I want to be able to stick things everywhere, right? Mm. I want to be able to put it on the side and it, all these different designs I was playing with. And mm. if you go local, it's either on the the breast pocket area or on the back or big on the front. And I was like, yeah. but what about sleeve? What about here? What about that? And then the prices just are astronomical. So why would I pay seventy dollars to create this and then try and on sell it to someone for seventy five? It's just not. I wouldn't well, want to pay that, that for a shirt. So. Well, and that's right. Yeah, and this is part of the reason why. Yeah, after our conversation the other day, I kind of changed direction as to what what products I was actually going to um, to provide as the yeah as the product is that, and yeah, I won't go into it too much because I, I do want to have some you know sleep uh some uh, aces up my tentacles so per se but um what it really comes down to is that you really and this is something that i've found myself you know doing a lot of research in the print on demand stuff is that you need to you can't just chance this stuff and like what jackie said as well is that you need to order the bloody things and have it delivered to you first just to check quality <laughs> because if if you start shipping things out that yeah and i, I find that yeah the shirts that i'm wearing now i'm actually Stand up. Ooh, look at that. Oh, you can't really see my tentacles at all. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is a two XL shirt, but this yeah fits like a four XL. So yeah, it really depends on what the company, yeah, where the company's coming from and where it comes from. So with print on demand businesses, I find that it will actually use you know a, 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 it doesn't use the same printer everywhere. So basically, you'll you'll find the closest printer to that yeah you know, to that customer. And print from there so you can't yeah you can't provide consistent quality across the fence so you kind of that's why i'm probably at this stage taking you know shirts and off off the rack i suppose per se just to say hey unless i can control the the quality and i suppose brand image because brand image is a, a quite a big thing that you need to be very mindful of especially if you are going into um to all these different things is that yeah you want to be putting out stuff that people want to wear or they want to be using it and, and can wear <laughs> you know you don't be you know selling really paper thin shirts and all these different things but um yeah so like it's 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 strange yeah i never even thought of using china as a um, print on demand shirt but yeah so what even like the same supply with the same yeah, size exactly same, different thing. same supply and everything so with them you can actually integrate your shopify account and everything else so you design it on there however you want to design it and you add the link and people will order it from there and it'll go straight to them. You, you basically cut out completely. You're not worried about it and you just pay. Well, you get the difference back. Yep. Like you say, yep. 20 bucks, whatever, for a shirt, you'll get 10 bucks back. Um, obviously, the prices are all over the place. But yeah. the big concern for me, they can do other products, fantastic. And, and you know, with, with, I don't know, bags and everything, size isn't going to change. It doesn't matter. But yeah. like it, with, the, <laughs> with the hoodie as well, um, it, it wasn't a... This is the the woody sample, and it's not it's not thick material, which I didn't expect mm. for the price. It, it's like a summer hoodie kind of thing. Yep, yep. But the wood itself it. is astronomically huge, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I was about well, to say, we we, we might yeah. I won't, I won't, won't, won't say what I'm going to say, but I'm pretty sure people will probably understand <laughs> where I'm going with that. You might have to cut some eye holes out, but yeah, um, exactly. I, I had it on, and it, it comes to here, right? It's absolutely. Yeah. But the the hoodie itself was made really well, and then it's it's comfortable. It's just the sizing just all over the place. So yeah, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. I'm not happy with it. So I might add kids shirts in the future because they are true to size, and with kids it's a lot easier and it's cheaper. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, the other stuff I'll just hold off for the moment till I find yeah, some. And, and, I, and I find a lot of YouTubers that they run the t-shirts straight away, right? So they use t-shirts and stickers, and you know, realistically, you need to be making sure what kind of product you're punching out there. So that's definitely something that, like, I wasn't aware of. That a you yeah. could buy a shirt from China. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could, and a lot of people probably knew that, but it never really crossed my mind because all the research that I've been doing is, you know, localized, you know, print-on-demand shirts, shops, and all these different things. So that's good. So I, I suppose a little want to talk a little bit about your creation, RK. So if you could give me a little bit of background regarding him. <laughs> so yeah. So <clears throat> excuse me. Um, my family live in WA, and we we travel a bit. We do a lot of road trips, and we take the caravan across Australia, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm that's a lot of time to talk in the car and a lot of time to come up with ideas and, and talk about whatever. And as we're driving through, we, we noticed different stories of Australian history and we had a bit of a laugh about it. And we talk about drop bears and all this other stuff. And 
we started talking about, oh, wouldn't it be cool to have our own figure, thinking about Mischief Toys and, and other other figure companies? It'd be really cool just to have our own. Even if we don't sell any, just, just to know that we've created something, you know, that'd be really awesome. Um, what kind of character would we do? And we started throwing out all these random Australian history stories and everything else, and I landed on Ned Kelly. And yeah. the reason I landed on Ned Kelly was he's a bit of a rebel, right? He's a bush ranger fighting against against the, the police and everything else. But he, to me, from what I've read about him, he, he's very um, advanced for the time, coming up with armour and, and creating this this bucket helmet and, and all this armour and everything else. And then delving into it and reading a bit more and hearing that his skull is actually still missing to this day, right? So his actual real-life story, his skull is missing. Like, oh, I didn't know that. And the more I spoke to people about it, like, oh, I didn't know that either. And I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, so we got to WA and it was around Christmas time and I started getting more and more, hey, actually, it would be really cool to not do, like, look at an Australian figure, make something really Australian because we can't see, I, I, I don't know, I'm happy to be corrected, but I don't know of any Australian designer toy that's actually around. Um, so it'd be cool to create one, but I don't want to do a koala and I don't want to do a kangaroo because everyone knows that they're Australian. But that's yeah. just something completely different. And I was talking to my partner, Dan, and I just said, well, what if we made modern Ned Kelly? Oh, I can't really yeah. call it Ned Kelly because it's, you know, we're, we're then, you know, breaching other things. I'm like, no, we'll call it something else. So, so we come up with RK. Now, what does RK stand for? Who knows? Is it a, a boy or a girl character? Who knows? It, it is RK. And, and that's just where we stand with it. And we talked about more and more. And then I, I hit up my artist that did my logo, explained what we wanted, a, a modern kind of Ned Kelly character, but different and kind of, not slothy looking, but I, I want him to look messy or him, her, it to look messy, like a hoodie and just relaxed. And that's how it came up with RK and got the first sketches. And I thought, well, actually, this is pretty cool. This could actually go somewhere. And then the more we think about it, we, we fall more in love with it. And, and yeah. everyone started going, oh, that's different. And it started getting a bit of interest that way. <laughs> me. And, I, and I suppose that, that leads into one of the questions I have written on my little um, notepad of death in front of me. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'd like to, yeah, it wouldn't be an interview with the octopus unless you know we uh, started tearing into people because you know people expect that. But I suppose that, and this is something that you know that a lot of people have got to learn across the spectrum as well is that when you were floating this yeah you know, RK product around and yeah you know, discussing all these different things, who did you actually ask? For their opinion this is just a just a really random question and i do have a line of questioning with this so just just friends and friends of friends so yeah. people that um we've known since we got married you know that there's we happen to meet up with them at christmas times so, hey this is what i'm thinking and i actually spoke about my whole 10-year plan right a yep. whole vision that i've got and i've got this this rather large vision that we've, we've modified a little bit and him and his partner were sitting there going oh actually can see that and then we always start talking more and more and I'd, I'd show sketches of what I'm thinking and like actually yeah that's not too bad you know so it intrigues people right mm. well, it has intrigued mm. people and it's that's just enough I think to you know what it's not a complete dud idea <laughs> it is something yeah. that can yeah. and grow it's just how do I do it properly and yeah, yeah. lessons learned from and there I, and, I, and I suppose that yeah and there's a lot of questioning yeah. I'm, I'm portraying with this now is that you know, this is not pointed at Jackie, but yeah, just a more or a generalized comment that especially I found as well, you know, with the different iterations with the, you know, the octopus and all these different things is that you don't necessarily want to be asking your friends and your family and all these different things because they'd be like, hey, Jackie, that's fantastic. Yeah, this is good. What yeah. I would suggest is that, you know, for Jackie, for example, like there's a, a mischief choice, mischief choice, mischief, mischief, I can't even speak now, <laughs> mischief toys Facebook page. This is what happens when I, uh, <laughs> when I uh, hit the salt water a bit earlier, but realistically, you know, if Jackie was in the infancy, you know, or the design phase of this, this product toy, she could just put a sketch up and say, Hey guys, I'm looking at this. What do you think? Give me your most brutal feedback and all these different things. So that would give it like a, a really, because you know, realistically, you're not looking at selling your products to your friends and family. Cause you're going to go, you're going to go broke very quickly. <laughs> if you only got like, you know, a, a support team of four. Quickly. Well, that's right. That's exactly right. So, you know, that, um, you know, you want to be looking at, you know, from a primarily objective point of view. And, yeah, you know, like I do like the figures. So, I think you're onto, you know, the, the design, I suppose I could say. There's no figures touches that I'm aware of. But realistically, that, yeah, you need to, I suppose, 
just because you're in love with it, you need to have that fact checked or you know that idea checked just to make sure that you know, like it wouldn't be a case of you know, like I wouldn't recommend walking into an op shop or a thrift store and asking the lady behind the counter, but you know, just saying, you know, like friends of a friend, like you're saying, is that go up to someone that you've never met before and say, Hey, look, you know, if you've seen this on a you know, would you be do you like it? Would you be interested in buying a t shirt with its design? All these different things. So, just because you're in love with that product, it doesn't mean that you know, everyone else will get on board. And it's just lucky that you know, well, I've had quite a few, um. People that are very blunt, and, and they love it, you know, they discuss it with, with blunt people like, like yourself, Octo, at times. Um, but <laughs> the, the reaction wasn't negative. That's right. A lot of people weren't completely blown away, like confused, but like, mm. oh, oh, that's actually, that's different, you know. So, <clears throat> excuse me, which, which for me works. Could I have done more marketing, like you said, Pro properly? We could have done a bit more fishing around. Um, but essentially, I have a husband that's very cynical about everything, and he he got on board quite quickly. <laughs> um, and normally, Mister Negative <laughs> would blast it completely out the water, and he didn't. So, it is for me. I'm, I'm getting the right vibes for it, and it yeah, I'm and not going to be yeah, like, from it, but I reckon it's going to create. Yeah, something. and like I said, it's, it's like, <laughs> like I said, I, I am quite fond of your design. Like even you know, for this little guy here that you know, I collect almost religiously now, right? Like when even when I bought the first couple of figures, I wasn't completely sold on it. I was almost like um, a bit of Stockholm syndrome from you guys, going, "Oh yeah, we're we're in love with this figure." So I was kind of pushed into that. And even now, I don't display them. I display them in the boxes because I think the box is the best thing about them. <laughs> so yeah, these are the things that you need to be mindful of. Is that yeah you know, that you may love the product. You know, like you might think it's going to make you millions and millions of dollars and all these different things, and it can, like, or it could. Yeah, but the thing, the fact of the matter is, is you need to put it out there, like test and adjust. It's that, and what Jackie and I talked about, and we will talk a little bit about later as well, is um, you know, social media presence and all these different things, is that maybe you know, if you are looking at making print on design, uh, print on demand or you know, are, you are looking to the, the point of making designer toys and all these different things, at that initial sketch phase, don't go too far in, down the garden path and you know, start you know, committing thousands of thousands of dollars for a product when yeah, when people go, oh my god, that looks like Uncle Festa. <laughs> I don't want that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, like you really need to get a, a test and adjust. And maybe if you like, we we're talking before is that yeah, you know, like Facebook pages are dedicated to like yeah, you know, designer toys or um, and I suppose on the flip side, you need to be very careful because at that stage, you're probably you're not trademarked or you're not registered for that product. So yeah, realistically, yeah, someone could pinch it. And I'm not too au fait with <laughs> the legal the legal ease of that of that that stance, but you really, I, I suppose that, you know, not so much to Jackie or to myself is that, that you need to test and adjust if you are looking at going to that path and before you start committing a lots and lots and lots of funds because I see it on a regular basis that people will, yeah, they'll buy, like, yeah, from a, I suppose from a retailing perspective is that people will buy stuff without doing the research on it, right? So, and it could be like translated across to, you know, print on demand or designer toys or all these different things. It needs to be marketed for this stuff. And, you know, if anyone doesn't, <laughs> if there's people not there to buy it, you, you're going to lose money quite quickly. So, yeah, that's right. No, I agree. But uh, I suppose we, um, now we've moved on to, to RK, is that how have you publicized this character? <laughs> um, <laughs> not enough. Not enough. Um, definitely lessons learned there. But the, the, the problem, I'll be very blunt, the problem we had was we were delayed with the Chinese New Year in getting our pins, okay? Mm -hmm. So that set our, our launch a bit of it all over the place. And then combined with that, I was actually in Europe and Dan was going to Japan when I got back from Europe. So we had a, an overlap. And then Dubai got flooded, so I was longer in um, Europe than expected. So... We, we rushed our launch because we didn't want to change it again. And the reason we didn't want to change it again is I don't want to be seen as a company that keeps changing it. So I ran a Discord and in the Discord I said, this is my launch date. We're set because we know we're going to have it. Crap, we don't have the products. How do we – okay, launch date won't be this date. We'll have to push it back. And I said, Dan, I don't want to push it back again because then we'll just always – well, they're never going to launch. They keep pushing it back. So I didn't want to have that aspect to it. Um, yeah. But we, we, we did it and we, we got it out and – we, we tried – we're both not very social. So this is the most social I am on, <laughs> on the internet uh, is this conversation with yourself. Um, hmm. My daughter does have her little YouTube that we started just as a bit of a bit of a fun thing in the background. But as a proper 
social media presence. We don't have it. And we definitely need to work on that. We, we discussed that as well. Um, so it really was word of mouth, I suppose, we the instigator. And we, we had one or two people that were very dedicated to spreading to their, their group of friends and then it built that way, which we're very thankful for. Um, if that hadn't happened, we'd still be sitting there doing nothing, really, not selling anything, really. Um, so yeah. it, it, it is a very important part of the process, especially nowadays. Mm. But it's just something that we we struggle with and we need to look at and we need to fix it. Basically. Realistically, yeah, and that, that, that's 100% correct, right? Like, yeah, realistically, you yeah, know, from my perspective is that I was always one of those going to do it. So I suppose a little bit of background story from myself is that I think I first materialized on the YouTube in comments around 2020, 2021. <laughs> but, you know, I've had a few people in the YouTube space reach out to me. So, hey, look, yeah, you should use a YouTube channel. But it took me two years to get off my, you know, off my tentacles and, you know, do all those different things. So it's like it's more or less taking the plunge. And I think from your perspective is that you have to try and work out who you talk your target audience is right is it like you know millennials is it gen z or gen x and all these different things as a baby boomers whatever, whatever yeah yeah all those different things and, yeah and and market to them accordingly well because like i said that you'd have to do um a bit of market research and say all right who's collecting toys who has the expo the expendable funds to yeah, if I am looking at selling my product for 80 Australian dollars, so let's say about 40 pounds and maybe 55 a US, mm. um, you know, who has that kind of money that could just throw that money aside once every two months, every three months, whatever, it would bring a figure out is that, yeah, it would probably be like older millennials and all these different things. Okay, so what, what kind of platforms do older millennials use? They use Facebook. They use probably, <laughs> if they want to be trying to be cool, they probably use TikTok. Yeah, Snapchat and everything else I can't keep up with. Well, so many. Well, that's right. Like, I probably wouldn't use Snapchat. Um, but I suppose TikTok would be you know, a good thing for you and all these different things. And, you know, because like, I know you said earlier that your daughter's <laughs> yeah, engaged in it. And I don't know if she does TikTok or she plays in TikTok and all these different things. But, yeah, she might be your – eventually she might be the face of that social media for that younger demographic to make it look cool and hip and all these different things. Like – yeah, if she could bring out her own RK makeup line or something along the lines of that with you, yeah, the funky ideas. colors, the ideas. funky colors. <laughs> but yeah, like I'm saying, is that, but you need to start with a, a social media element, and I don't think you know YouTube's the best way to put it across because, like, yeah, I'm just going to use Heather and Chris right as an example. Is that mm. from what I gather and what the research I did is that they had some sort of a significant you know, following on YouTube before they punched out these figures, right? All their initial figure. And they started, was it stickers? or I know they had pins at one stage. So they basically worked with They started with pins and then they went to figures. So, yeah. Yeah. So, but like, like I'm saying is that from, I suppose if you like, and this is across the board everywhere, is that, you know, you need to really, you know, before you get into that planning stage of selling and all these different things, how are you going to market this item? And I know you do have a Discord, and I have I am a member of that Discord, and, <laughs> and like I, I suppose, and I'm a member of your um, I think I follow you on Instagram as well. But but like I said, that you need to be consistent from a perspective mm. for the inst for the social media perspective. So, but uh, that's definitely something we spoke about last time, and hasn't changed. Shame on you. <laughs> oh no, uh, and it's. it's it's difficult when you're introverts and it's difficult when you um, have full-time jobs. I don't, I don't know how Chris and Heather do it, to be honest. And they they yeah. do their channel, they do their Patreon, they do their everything all at once, mm. plus their full-time jobs. And it's like, I, I, I don't have the capacity for that. I don't know how you do it. Um, I'd be kind of curious but, to see what, what their personalities would be like. I, I think Heather would be more extroverted, but I, I get the really strong introverted vibes off Chris. Like Even Heather, to a degree, like... I think she straddles between you know, intro, introvert and extrovert, like that really fine line. Um, but... <laughs> I went to a uh, event in New York um, and they were there, uh, Alliance Fest, and we, we bumped into each other. We, we knew who each other were. We bumped into each other. Oh, I want to get a photo. Like, yeah, cool. And then sort of just the three of us just awkwardly standing there. It was, <laughs> it was so <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> um, I, I can't hear anything when there's a lot of noise or, you know, tinnitus, ear issues. Um, mm. Chris had the same problem. And it was just that awkward silence kind of thing. And then, my mum was there as well, and she's like, "Oh, cool! These people, we know these people. Yeah, we know these people. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, cool. All right." So we just sort of went our own way again. But it was just that awkward moment. Um, yeah. They're, they're that, 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 well, that's right. Yeah, and like, like I said, yeah, I think we we normally see them a little bit in the group chat that we're in as well. So it's good to have that like kind of relatability to them. And I think 
yeah, you know, like if I was to model my perfect business, I'd probably follow yeah you know, quite closely in their steps, right? The way that they handle their social media aspect, where they do you know <laughs> mingle with the common folk per se, that they do jump into their, their Facebook groups and they have all those different things. So, like I was saying to you before, is that I think you'd probably be better off making a an official loot in a boot Facebook page if you haven't already got one. Um, mm-hmm. Just basically teasing, like very similar, like yeah, like I said that plagiarism is the best thing in this case right <laughs> just go on and follow there follow the, the steps and i don't know if you have watched their podcast like the making mischief mm. like the podcast they had like yeah. um like five or six episodes before they they, they turned it off because they had ran out of time and you are, if you are watching this heather turn it back on it's my demand because yeah, <laughs> i love that good. series um, but, to so i will put it in the comment section down below if you are looking at starting a business because that is very um very clever <laughs> on that so, but but like I was saying, is that you need to have some sort of presence, right? And you know, being introverted, um, my wife's introverted, so <laughs> I know what it's like in that perspective. So, yeah, you know, I annoy her to no end because you know, throwing my tentacles around and yeah, you know, breaking out in a song every time I get a chance. But what it really comes down to is that you need to work around how you're going to get around that. So maybe it might be a case of creating TikTok videos and not not making yourself, yeah, you know, just hold the camera here and you know, have your hands and all these things because that's <laughs> That's how mm. I was making my initial TikTok videos. And I'm in the, like I said to you before, I'm actually going to go back to, to square one with my TikTok, just strip everything off it and make it primarily just a business TikTok. And that's what you want to do. So, yeah, valid points. Definitely yeah, and, uh, like I said, it, it's not going to be, um, yeah, it's not going to be one of those things that, yeah, you, know, you learn overnight, right? It's going to be, and, and one of my biggest things about going on YouTube initially, and if you go back to my very first videos, please don't because they're horrendous, is that, you know, like what we, we thought we were we were breaking the mold. Yeah, you know, we thought we were not I won't say fantastic, we thought we were decent. And then when we did a playback of the first episode, it was like horrendous. It was like, Hi Jackie, how are you today? And yeah, you know, like it was horrendously bad, right? I haven't I yeah, I haven't got much better, don't get me wrong. But the fact of the matter is is that you just it's one of those things that you, you just have to be consistent and like at no point I don't think I've ever had a troll actually come back and say, Hey, look, you crap or you had all these different things. So that negativity the negativity, or well, maybe they're scared of it. Yeah, you know, gigantic, handsome, eight foot octopus. But, <laughs> but what it comes down to is that 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 negativity, as long as you don't let it affect you, or yeah, you know, like I said in my case, it doesn't really exist. Um, you just have to keep plugging away because people start somewhere, and more often than not, ones that you know make snide remarks or they yeah you know, take swipes at you and all these different things, they probably live in their parents' basement <laughs> with nothing better to do. Yeah, their, their, their life is probably you know quite boring in comparison. So. I wouldn't let that worry too much about you, but I exactly. suppose in, in your respect, yeah, you could probably go and, you know, and like I said uh, numerous times before, um, through the podcast that we do with Grumpy Granny, is that use chat GP to chat T. There we go, <laughs> I'm, I'm shutting down chat GPT to set up your business, yeah. Like maybe it might be a case of, you know, write me a, a social media script for an introvert, yeah, and something along lines of this, and then, well, yeah, you could basically do all these different things, so. <laughs> And it might even be a case that you have to do, you know, social media in that sense. It might be just a Facebook page and an Instagram page it might be more than suffice, you know, like and when you do start generating interest, you know, Jesse might be old enough to, you know, to take carriage of that or you could probably hire someone just to, you know, on Fiverr to, to do the stuff behind the scenes for you for an extra couple of bucks if you, if you are adverse about being in front of the camera, so. Yeah, it's like um, my sister was saying as well, if you're going to, have a Facebook business page, you need to actually post on it every couple of days. You need to keep it active and stuff. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, she goes, but you haven't been. I'm like, yeah, okay. I've been sick. Yeah, you know, well, that's right. And, and, well, that's right. Sick. And like, yeah. And like I said to Jackie, I, before I went live, I did a lot of research today. And this is the last time that she uh, posted on her. Um, Facebook page. I don't know, Facebook. One of the, one of the platforms. So, like I said, that, yeah, even. <laughs> Like, I suppose that it's quite hard to balance, like you said, you're working full time and all these different things. But it really, yeah, you need to, I suppose, kind of slice away maybe 10 or 15 minutes a day just to do a check in. Like, might be a case on on, on Facebook or Instagram. Okay, g'day, guys. Well, yeah, like going back, I uh, know, oh like I said, like a broken record, but <laughs> I think Chris and Heather are the only ones I know that do design a toys from my perspective is that every time they, they ship something out, they have like that. 
here's ghastly things. So they got like a hashtag and you can take a photo with a toy and, you know, and kind of all these different things and have competitions. And by no, by no means am I telling you it has to do competitions, but have something that generates interest within the community. Like hmm. what's the most random place you can have your pin or what's the most random place if you put a sticker, all these different things. It doesn't even have to relate to your product, right? So, you know, like you might say, all right, we're doing a googly eye challenge. You know, the person that has the most funniest googly eye thing will will do something. Will yeah, we might do something towards the end of the week or something along the lines of that. So you're not so much trying to force a product down their throat. Yeah, you know, just basically you know every two seconds bring up, hey, look this this is this is this this and this and this. Um, you know, you're basically building your community through little things and you know subtly feeding through the the RK stuff coming through, but. <sighs> Have you heard of um, Tim from Hanley West? I think it is. Have you heard of him? He is actually extremely good with social media and definitely something you need to um, look at. I'll just find a link for you. Sorry, a bit off topic, but he um, he does find Tim challenges around the world. And you find yeah. them, you get a what, or um, 200 people find them, they get a key ring, all that kind of stuff. And it's actually very mm. engaging. And watching him, like, oh, geez, I wish I was like him. <laughs> You know, and that's I and that's something that I, I did do it and I probably will do um Tim Hayden, sorry. Yep. Yeah, so over the next six months I was gonna do something along the lines of that it was like a where's Octo kind of thing. And yeah, I was gonna look at doing yeah, the print on demand things, but with stickers and actually, you know, put a sticker on a light post in Canberra or where I'm you know, all these different things. And yeah, obviously if you the first person that comes across that and you know tags me in it or something like that would yeah, you know, win some sort of yeah, you know, maybe a t shirt or something like that, just to get some community engagement. And like you said, is that you're building you're building it yeah you're building it organically like you don't really want to be having to to rely on that word of mouth thing because it becomes quite slow and yeah quite cumbersome because yeah like we've seen with the with the um your latest release but i, I suppose that what lessons have you learnt since the inception i suppose what, what's the big things that you probably go oh crap i wish i had known about that <laughs> a couple of big ones so we're very fortunate that um we had a friend reach out and suggest a particular manufacturer for our pins. So we knew the, what the quality was going to be like and, and we're very happy with the quality of the pins. Um, what I didn't do enough research into, what I didn't realise was with Shopify, I thought it was a complete product. All right, so you, you pay, you got a website and it's a fantastic website. you you got all these things that you can do, but then you've got to pay additional for apps. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's if you want it to be fancy. I don't need a fancy website. I just need a basic website. Um and they say, oh, Shopify can integrate your shipping and they can do this and they can mm. do that. Like, oh, that, that's really easy. You, you get your order come in, you click a button, a print a label, everything gets paid for through the, the website, you stick label on your product and you send it. Yep. And what we found was it's not that integrated because you need to pay extra right. for that yep. for that bid. So it was all these extra costs. I'm like, but if I just open up my account where I send things from, and I do it that way, A, it was $5 cheaper per product to send. Mm, mm. And it, it took me extra time, but it saved me the monthly fees. So yeah. things like that and, and integrating different things. I, I don't need the website to be too fancy. I don't, I don't, for where we are in life right now with the website, we don't need online chat. We don't need all the bells no. and everything else that's no. happening. So like, cool. Um, I would have preferred the shipping to be all integrated, but it's not. That's okay. So that was a lesson learned. Um, we, we had a, a product issue, which we'll no doubt we'll talk about shortly. Uh, for me, other big hurdles were the language barrier like we discussed before, explaining my vision and trying to get that across to the manufacturer. Now, we've had 3D modelling done for our figure. Yep. Uh, we've, they've printed it. They've painted it. Um, we are now having issues with them because there's a bit of a, a disparity about what we think we paid for and what they believe we haven't paid for as in shipping it back to us and all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're a bit cranky with them at the moment and trying to work out how to resolve that issue. Plus they didn't listen to exactly what we wanted. So for, for them, they'll get the image and they say, yeah, we can make them to 3D um, sample and we'll do 3D imaging, blah, blah. And they did 3D imaging and like the shoelace, um, the, you know, the plastic bit for the, shoe, the shoelace yep. end was there instead of on the shoelace. So things like that. Like, well, that's completely wrong. You need to fix this. And like I said, my mm. husband's quite pedantic. And this is wrong. This is wrong. And every time we had to keep going, no, you, you guys aren't. The helmet shape's not right. This is not right. You basically AI'd it. Whatever you did, it was completely incorrect. You know, it mm. didn't look right. 
so we eventually got to the right stage and that took I'm going to say about six or eight weeks to finally get it to okay now we're happy with how it looks so I, I suppose how much like I'll, I'll slightly interrupt you in this respect but yeah, I, I suppose with the um, the 3d modeling right so obviously we are talking about you know for those that <laughs> aren't as smart as an octopus with nine brains or Jackie in that respect because she has done it before is that so what happens is when Jackie sends over the files to a, a Japanese manufacturer, uh, Japanese Chinese manufacturer, right? So they basically make the product from from that product. Is that what what kind of lead time or wasted time have you had in that respect? So you, you said you had like all those revisions over the eight weeks, but I suppose what the line of questioning I'm getting to is it worth engaging with a translator or something like that, paying the extra couple of hundred dollars to say, hey, look, you know, I'm going to use an intermediary here. So basically someone that speaks quite fluent English and quite fluent Chinese what, just to you know, push it across from that perspective. What we should have done, which I now know, um, is there actually an American guy that will print a 3D product for you and he yeah, was okay. a quarter of the price of what we paid. Mm. Um, so ideally, and this is what someone else suggested it, I believe this just as Chris and Heather as well during one of our Patreon calls was get the 3D model made and then send that to China. Said this is what I want, and yeah, okay. and that would have yeah. saved a lot of time, a lot of money, communication barriers, etc. Hmm. Um, or have someone else do the 3D modeling pictures for you. You know, use Fiverr, or use whatever, yeah. use other other means yeah. to get that done instead of just assuming. Oh no, this would be easy. They know what we're talking about. No, That's it's, right. it's, yeah. it's assumption, right? It's the death of everybody. Um, so. Definitely lessons learned there uh, with the, like I said, the price disparity we have with them at the moment. Also a lesson learned there. We, we didn't put it in fine print. So mm. they avoided putting in there the shipping cost. When I'm like, well, I paid for the shipping. No, you didn't. You know, like, what? <laughs> so a bit of a yeah. disagreement point there. Um, and also my big tip is don't do it during China's New Year because that delays you yeah. by quite a few weeks as well. <laughs> With yeah. any uh, you know, I suppose the reason why I was aware of that, you know, that <laughs> language barrier is that, <clears throat> excuse me, is that I've got a friend that, you know, he's he's from Macau, so he's you know, Chinese as well. But the fact of the matter is he's like, hey, look, you need to be mindful of this, you need to be mindful of this. And definitely, 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 if you are engaging, I suppose, in a bigger bigger venture in China is that you need that intermediary. Like, yeah, and, I, and I'm fortunate enough that I could use him because he's, you know, well connected with his family. Oh, so. <laughs> Mr. D Octopus. But um <laughs> what it what it really comes down to is that like I was saying is that yeah, if you are advantageous, it really comes back to these connections. Like like I said, that this person I wouldn't pay because you know he's a mate. So it would be all pro bono from him. But like I was saying, is that use your network. If you've got someone that in your social circle or you know that you work with that say, hey, look, you know, do you mind translating? Yeah, what I want into Mandarin to you know, explicitly tell them what I want because they'll actually put their two cents in as well. Like, yeah, my friend that will do this, he's like, hey, look, yeah, from a cultural perspective, because there are those cultural differences that a lot of people don't take into consideration. That, you know, what we see normalized in the West, you know, is not necessarily the same in the, you know, the Eastern countries, I suppose you could probably say. So, <laughs> like, with, with my friend, like you're saying, all right, you didn't consider this, you didn't consider this, you didn't consider this. He'll actually put that on top of the, <laughs> put it on, and and yeah, and I, I suppose from what I found with dealing with him, though, they're, they're quite forceful, right? So basically, he like where I I suppose that you know, be you know an eight foot handsome, well dictating octopus myself, but he'll actually tell them, you know, like this is what this is the, the go, this is you know really to blunt point kind of thing. So you really need to have that, I suppose, like if you are looking from a yeah, a lessons learned perspective, like you're saying, you can either go through a third party to print that, yeah, for a quarter of the cost, or you could probably say, hey, look, realistically, in the grand scheme of things, I don't have 10 weeks to go through 15 revisions because I've screwed something up. Maybe I might pay $100 or $200 to, you know, someone on Fiverr that I can communicate in fluent English and, you know, communicate back and forth to make sure that they get it, then they push it across <laughs> To the manufacturer from that perspective as well but but like i was saying is that you kind of need to do your research though like, like, don't you because it really comes up in the wash where people come you know like you almost have to be willing enough to let enough out there in the in the community for people to understand what your vision is to work out what's going on because like you're saying is that you know like you wouldn't have known about this person in america that you know does the 3d modeling or the 3d printing uh, for you to send that product to Japan, uh, for Japan, for Japan in my mind. <laughs> Tell Dan I'm after him. Uh, but what it, what it comes down to is like, yeah, like I say, is that you really need to you know, limit your information what's out there because obviously you don't you know, shoot yourself in the foot. But on the flip side is you want to kind of 
get as much knowledge and as much as information as you can. So researchers don't need friends. So you don't, don't just focus on Google, but look at Reddit, look at um, Facebook, YouTube. There's all these different avenues, and I found Reddit, even though it can be very brutal with some stuff, is actually very informative if you find the right thing, right, right page. So there is toy making and pin manufacturing and everything else in Reddit as well. I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about that. And yeah. going through that, going through uh, Facebook, I found a different manufacturer for something else we're working on. So I'm like, y you really need to broaden out and not just focus. I know I get all my information from Google here. No, you need to look at Google. I, I suppose, look, yeah, from my point of view, right, like, yeah, with what the product that, you know, Jackie and I were talking about previously is that, there are people that you know get their rocks off about this kind of stuff, right? They they love the process, or that their whole life revolves around print on demand, and they know the stuff inside out. Like <laughs> you need you need to tap into those groups, either Facebook groups or you need to fake, like you're saying to Reddit groups and all these different things. Because like I wouldn't have been, you know, like when we were talking about it the other day, I was like, geez, I wouldn't have thought of that. This, yeah, you know, like you can have a a product that's duplicatable, yeah. So it's not as if like you're saying with the t-shirts is that. Every product I know out of this manufacturer is going to be identical and I can control that quality to a certain extent. With T-shirts, it's almost like throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping for the best. <laughs> like you kind of thing. So, But yeah, like I'm saying, is that you need to be really not romanticized. I don't use that word a lot um, on the podcast. Is you, you really have to do your, your research behind it. You can't just go, oh my God, this is a fantastic idea and run off and hope for the best because... It's not going to work out 100% of the time. Like it might work out on occasion, but yeah, really, really, you need to do your research. So, and that's good. But I, I suppose what I found scary though was I've, I've got this this image, this picture, this character, um, and bring it out to the world. Like we said before, it can be copied and it can be everything else. I mean, um, we're trademarked. I, I not 100% know how far that trademark goes if everything we create is trademark now or if i need to do another trademark which we're discussing with ip australia with but it's scary because this is your idea and someone else can just grab it and run with it if they're quicker mm -hmm. than money with it and and that was scary also something that like i said we, we fall in love with we, we think we can go places we've got a lot of ideas for it not everybody's gonna like it and you need to be able no. to handle you need to be able to handle the feedback you need to be able to go okay you didn't like it that's cool uh, i like it though yeah and, and i suppose yeah to be like a cynical point of view, um, right? So, that, yeah, feel that um, yeah. you need to have that robustness to it. Yeah, and, and I think, yeah. like, going back to that as well, is that you need to be open to that to that yeah. feedback where it's required as well. So, yeah. yeah, you don't really want to just, like I said, become infatuated with your own product and your own ego flies off the handle because you think it's fantastic, but you're not listening to your consumer base, you're not listening to your customers and all these different things and say, hey, look, yeah, this is what we want. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's missed the mark. All right, cool. No worries. That's the feedback. We know it's a fix the next time. Just don't, you know, don't, don't pick fights with the consumers because you're going to find very quickly that you'll lose your consumer base quite quickly. But, yeah, absolutely. And something I do want to raise before we get off the uh, social media topic is that with a product, if you're the face of the product, you know, for example, myself or, you know, Kristen Heather or, you know, Jackie, if she does decide to create a YouTube channel and all these different things is that, it really, the life of your products goes off, um, I suppose, lack of a better term, is the likability of you. So if I <laughs> brought up my own little you know, octopus figurine such as this, then all of a sudden I made some controversial comment and yeah, upset like a vast majority that you know, like got cancelled for an all intents and purposes. That product's dead in the water. Like, yeah, it's really hard, like, especially if you tie it to yourself, is that, look, you know, like I'm saying, is from a from you almost need to separate your ego or separate yourself from that product because like i'm saying is that you know really <coughs> if, if you're selling that product off the back of your image or off the back of your brand um you almost have to like i say keep yourself almost distant yeah enough to be you know associated with that brand but enough to say hey look you know i might necessarily agree with this but i'm not going to make it public <laughs> because if i do you know it could potentially like turn to crap quite quickly and you know all these different things so Yes, <laughs> I agree with that statement too. It's like we, we're looking at different um, designs for our, our character. We, I said, Dan, I want to stay away from flags. I want to stay away from certain other politi anything political. Mm. I, I don't want our character involved with that. We've got certain themes and we are completely neutral in all our themes, we think. Right. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, I don't want any controversy attached to it. it that's not, for yeah. me, that's not the place for it. it it's, it's business that's not focusing on political aspects of anything no and that, that, that's exactly right and, and i will give like a little bit of a um a teaser away to what you know what was 
floated around to me um, in regards to like print on demand products, right? So basically with the US election coming up towards the end of the year, they're like, why don't you, you know, target the, the American market with, you know, obviously the octopus being aligned with, you know, the Democratic Party or the, the Republican Party and all these different things. <laughs> you know, like, yes, it would be a quick buck. I could make probably a shit ton of money over a short period of time. But the thing is, though, then you're, like you're saying, you're aligning yourself to one 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 party or the other party or both parties and all these different things you kind of you know you're kind of walking a very fine line from that perspective that's probably something i would stay away from but yeah and like i said it's just you really need to be very mindful of yourself especially like i'm saying is that a lot of the youtubers um yeah especially in the reselling space that sell their own product and all those different things you almost have to remain neutral and not controversial <laughs> unless you are a controversial character and that's the that's the off the back of what you're playing as it works for some people very... but... <laughs> <That's right. laughs> i wonder who <laughs> but um but yeah but anyway but like i was saying is that that's something i did want to bring up is the case of like not, not you know targeting you or targeting me or targeting chris and heather and all those different things but if you are aligning an image or a product with your image. Yeah, for example, I'll be case in point for that because <laughs> there's not too many gigantic orange octopuses running around, you know, flogging off T-shirts and stuff like that. So, yeah, like I said, if you are, be very mindful of that, yeah, the product lives and dies by <laughs> what comes out of your mouth. So that's something you need to be mindful of. And I suppose that, you know, before we go into the grand opening of uh, what I've been waiting for for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to open up, um, yeah, what, what, what's on the horizon for, for RK? I know you touched a little bit about the, the figure and all these different things. Yeah, so the figure itself, I don't think anybody knows what it looks like yet. We've been talking about RK, but um, so I've got a pin here. I don't know if you... So that, that's RK, right? Yep. That's what it looks like. Or he, she, it. Um, we are planning to have a, a figure made in the next 18 months. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a bit of a, a trek to get there. Be realistic about it, right? We, we need to find the right manufacturer. We need to find everything. It's going to take time to produce, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we also found that we actually enjoy making the pins. We actually have a lot of fun with the pins. Um, mm. And I've, I've always said I don't. I love Chris and Heather's Ghastly. You know, I'm a big fan, as you know. And I've got all the Ghastlies. I've collected all of them. But that's a lot. That's Even a lot. the orange, the uh, black light gargoyle, have you got that one as well? No, that's the only one I don't have. But that so you don't have all of them? You don't have all of them. It sounds like yeah, maybe someone should send you one. <laughs> uh, they should, but they won't. Um, so, <laughs> so, a, bit of, a little bit of a backstory, a bit of fun history there. So, started watching Mischief Toys on, on YouTube and stuff, and got, started getting into it. And hmm. first, I thought these guys are dumb. You know, it was, it was a lot of silliness on it. The, and then I, I was off sick, I think, and I was just starting watching more and more, you know, the daily videos and everything else. I started getting really into it. Mm -hmm. And then Dan came out and go, what, what's this crap you're watching? What? Oh, it's Chris and Heather, they blah, blah, blah. And then he started sitting down and then we started watching it more and more. Um, and then I said to him, you know what? I need a holiday. I'm going to go to New York Comic Con. They're going to be there for the first time. I'm just going to go to New York. And this was mm. about four weeks before New York Comic Con. It really was very last minute. It's spare of the moment. And it was, <laughs> and I was lucky enough to be able to do it. Um, he goes, okay. I said, yep, I'm going to go for a week. Just going to go to the con. I, I've always wanted to go to Comic Con. Never mm -hmm. been to one. Why not hit one of the biggest ones in the world? Um, so <laughs> then he was driving to work, and I was talking to him. I said, while I'm there, I might just pop down to Disney World. It's on the same side of the country. And he goes, yep. yeah, we could do that. I'm like, what do you mean we? Mm -hmm. All three of us could go. I'm like, oh, Okay. <laughs> and I realized I just didn't have a passport, so I need to go down to Sydney and get a passport sorted. You know, all these things all last minute. And we flew over and we went for two days, mm. the Thursday and Friday. So the Thursday, that was our main goal was to go to Mischief Toys and meet these guys and buy their brand new figure they were going to have, which was the, the New York Gargoyle, the, the grey one. Um, no one knew about the, the breaking free one yet. <laughs> Everyone just knew about the grey one. Mm. We lined up, very excited. We had little shirts made and... Um, Jesse had a little kangaroo that she gave Heather, and it was all you know, very exciting, and it was exciting for them as well. It's the first time they were doing a booth, and you know it was all mm. you know, like, oh, it's fun. Um, got to meet them. Then they told us, open it up. If you've got a card, you can buy this other gargoyle. So those two gargoyles are very special to me. 
and the reason I tell the story is because I feel I should have the black light one as well. <laughs> I was wondering where this story. I was wondering where this story was going. It's like it's good. <laughs> having flashbacks of grumpy granny when I just fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> we were one of the first. We flew all the way over there, <laughs> spur of the moment to buy this gargoyle, and we still miss out on the hmm. black light one. I did the following That's year. That's right. Oh, jeez, Um, I went back Sounds again like last. PTSD. <laughs> back in last year, and now we're going again this year. So how does that all tie into what we're doing with RK? Um, we've been invited to release a pin at New York Comic Con through a friend that's got a stall there. So a bit quicker than what we were planning, but we're actually quite excited. We've got what we feel is quite a unique design that we're having made at the moment. And it's going to be limited, but we, we're not going to do big numbers. We're not big enough for big numbers. We're not going to sell hundreds, right? We would be lucky to sell. We're thinking between 50 to 70 at most is, is our our numbers that we're looking at um really? but we do have two yeah we do have two designs though so this particular one that we're looking at um i think we're aiming for a yearly of 50 yep 50 um and then this other one will be yearly of probably 75 100 which we well i suppose that probably. And I, I suppose I'll probably, you know, if we have about th three and a half people like watch this like we normally do, <laughs> but I, I'd probably do a call of call the arms. You know, obviously, if you are at New York Comic Con towards the end of the year and you are watching this and you want to go across and get a a, a pin from a uh, loot in a boot, uh, do slither over there. But uh, statistically speaking, right, and you need to work out like from statistics, right? So look, I, I suppose that. The reason why I question your 75 and your 50 and all those different things, I, I think that's brutally low. Like, mm. depending on your price point, right? Like, what I, I don't know what your price point is. That yeah, if you are selling a pin, because what you're selling your pins for currently $22, which include GST and all these different things. So, if you are selling it, and I don't know your arrangements with your friends, so if you're getting a kickback for every pin he sells, you might get a dollar or something along to that. Hey, Jesse, how are you? Sneaking around, Jesse. That's all right. We'll get to you in a second. Um, but yeah, so basically, what you could do is, like, I, I would push those numbers high. Like, maybe make some advertising positions and uh, advertising material and all those different things. So <laughs> I would probably, yeah, like I said, call on you know the people that are watching this video. If you, if you are collecting things or you into our Australian stuff, is that you know potentially, and I will put the uh, the website on. Um, the description field here as well. This is just the p picture of the um, ULE founders edition, which I do have a problem with, <laughs> and I will get to that in a second. But um, but the thing is, though, I think that well, it goes back to that social media perspective, right? Like you you're really your own worst enemy. And I did talk about this in our hour long phone call that we had a couple of months ago about this. Is that you need to almost go, all right? I don't care about what anyone thinks. I'm just going to write, create a Facebook page. Um, you know, drum up some interest, drum up some, you know, connections and all those different things, get people into that group, you know, find out who's going to Comic-Con, um, you know, <laughs> from an Australian perspective or, you know, from a US perspective and start going, like, even if you go into, like, because I can guarantee you sure as hell there'll be, you know, um, you know Facebook groups and you know, Reddit groups that have people attached to, you know, New York Comic-Con, you know, like meetups and all these different things. Yeah, you know, start dropping your name in there. Like, yeah, you know, like I said, don't force it down their throat and say, "Hey, I'm Jackie," and you know, I'm yeah, you know, I'd be happy to say that we're we're deb debuting a, a product over there or stuff like this. So then get that mentality, get that mindset that people are aware of it and all these different things. Because I'm only going to throw it out there. I'm going to say just say if there's ten thousand people walking around New York Comic Con, I know I know that dwarfs the number we're actually running around with Comic Con, but. Yeah, if you're selling 75 pins, statistically speaking, someone's going to come up and go, what the hell is that? Oh, that looks cool. I'll buy one. Yeah, and that, yeah, like 75, I would be quite surprised if that doesn't go overnight, like on a one-day kind of thing. So yeah. so, so there's different, a couple of different elements that we're looking at with that and discussing it with um, the guy that has a store all the time and, and mm. other elements. I've spoken to um, Chris and Heather as well. Uh, it, it's – our name definitely isn't big enough. And, and like we discussed, it, social media sh should be our friend and we should be working with it. Um Will it be big enough by New York Comic Con? It might. It, it, we might be able to, but I also don't want a product there that I don't sell. And I also want this I, particular item to be extremely limited because it's something we're not going to repeat. I, so, I understand what you're saying. This and this is where we're going to we're going to compete with this, right? So it infuriates me. And this is the point with the, your, your bloody your little pin that I'll, I'll get to it now because it's case in point of what it is, is right? So I was talking with some people behind the scenes. So I showed them like a couple of my reseller friends on YouTube. I showed them your website and all these different things. The main thing that they brought up about with the ULE 30 is that you don't have 
and you do now, you don't have a product that's evergreen, right? Like, you know, you don't have your base level ghastly or your base level pin that's, you know, in constant supply. <laughs> so, well, according to Josh, um, yeah, by all means, bring up your, you know, your, your 75 pin, bring up your 50 pin, all those different things, but have maybe... 500 or you know maybe i don't know the weight of these things but have you know 250 500 of the base pin which you might be selling for 15 dollars us or something along of that make yep. your limited edition ones 22 25 us because people are expecting to pay a markup on these things right so if you're a comic con the money's flowing and look at it from that perspective but yeah, the so pins that, that you that don't sell plan. bring back so we, we've got um we've got our common we've got a few other pins that they're just going to be there but for our new york comic con exclusive it is limited. Mm. It is completely. But that's what I'm saying. But, but that's what I'm saying is that you need to, you know, like I said, that you need to have a product that, yeah, you know, people want to collect as the base product. Yeah, you know, gets them through the door yeah. and all these different things. And and this is the thing that I have with the, uh, the ULE. Oh, I've lost my screen now. <laughs> this is why I can't be left alone with the, um, with the uh, the screenshots. But so this is your product, and I'll, I'll let you explain to me in a second with what it is. But it's the ultra limited thirty founders edition. Um, so without going too far into it that's what's in this so uh for complete transparency i bought this uh <laughs> so jackie hasn't sponsored this product at any mind like, i'm you know, surprised she did actually to be honest too so you know well, oh, yeah I, well i wasn't but I, I was basically going to tear your product apart regardless if you're on here or otherwise so that's why i bought it for so no, i will get into that in a second but so showing yeah can people completely oblivious to your company or completely outside the circle this is what i was going back to a bit earlier showing people what it is is that the the thing they came across with is that your price point's quite high for mm -hmm. for an introductory person right so what they suggested is they're saying hey look you know and i've seen the screenshots and i've seen all those different things that's in this box and yeah and don't get me wrong it's fantastic for you for what what's in it but what he was saying, and, and a few people have said this in, his, in itself, in itself, is that they would have made the ultra limited edition ten, and they would have basically had that with all your all your stuff in here. So basically, yeah, if you bought the <coughs> ultra limited edition ten, you got your your snazzy bag like you've got here for your eighty dollars. Um, however, yeah, if, if for example for these pins that yeah the, the three pins that you you're pushing out with the the product maybe sell that at, a, a, at a, a lower price point, but only just the three pins. So basically, yeah, I, I don't know how much you value pins at, but maybe like a price point of 40 or $50 for those three pins. Um, then you like your ultra limited edition 10, yeah, 10, which is the $80 one. Um, but then, yeah, like I said, that you, you're covering those two different price points because, yeah, like I said, that, yeah, people like, yeah, people within our yeah, social circle are buying that $80 one because, yeah, they want to support you, they're happy and they know what the product is. But you're looking at those people that have no idea or no attachment to your product, right? So you're trying to make them at a lower price point. So, hey, look, yeah, you're not really sure about what it is. And, yeah, we stand by the, the quality of our product. Hey, but you buy this, you yeah, know, this limited edition 20 set or 30 set, whatever it is at this lower price point, then you snag him in from that perspective. So that was a few people had that come back around. And like I said, that, yeah, like take it or leave it. Yeah. Like I don't particularly, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't particularly um, care. Definitely a discussion we had beforehand, right? Um, mm. <clears throat> we, we looked at individual pin prices and we looked at different markets. So we looked at the U S market, we looked at our market. Mm. Now we know Aussies don't want to spend money. Let's be honest. We, we, we are pretty, you can get it for free. We'll take it for free. We don't want to pay five bucks. Um, Damn tight asses. Absolutely. And being Dutch myself, I am completely on board. So I'm quite <laughs> with, uh, I my money. Um, so, but we also, and, and this is where it gets tricky. And, and, and I hear what you're saying, and then it's feedbacks taken on board. But the pin price we can't make too cheap because in year for us, we're lowering the, what we think the quality might be. Oh, that's a five dollar pin. You know, it's probably crap. You know, so. We, it's yeah. It's a tough market, and, and I, I get what you're saying. And, and should we have started with with our um, characters that, that are cheap, you know, single price pins, and single point pins, etc. Yes, but we also just wanted to go. This is this, and then we're going to build on the rest. So there's a there's hundred ways to skin a cat, but there's definitely smarter ways to do it than when we did it. And that's yeah, terrible. that's right. And, and like I said, that it's only purely for yeah lessons learned. And like I said before, this Absolutely. this is not yeah taking stabs at you. It's just more or less yeah what I've seen. Different. 
Yep. Well, the way, like, like I said, going back to the, my mentality, right, is that the customer comes first, then everything else will flow behind. Yeah. So basically, if you serve the customer, the customer will bring the money, the money will come. Yeah. So realistically, my focus is the customer, um, keeping them happy, everything else will fall in line after that, right? So like I was saying, is that you really need to, and like you said, the Australians are typically tight asses. The Americans and the UK people that do follow you or have that attachment to you, for example, like Chris and Heather, it becomes prohibitively expensive to, to send that product over there. So you almost need your own little distribution center over there that yeah, you know, basically can punch it out from that perspective as well. So about that. <laughs> what's that, um, sorry? We are talking to people about that. Um, the feedback I got from our American American friends that bought it is like, oh, that's only that much postage. Yeah, that's easy. Mm. We'll just pay for postage because mm. we, we offer, look, we're going to be uh, in New York in October. We're happy if you guys want to wait, we'll, we'll take it over with us. We'll send it from America. You can pick it up from us. We'll, we'll work it all out with whoever. And mm. only one person opted to send it to a friend in Australia to have them send it through. Everyone else was like, no, nah, that postage is nothing. So that surprised me as well. Yeah. I thought we'd get a bit more kickback about, oh, that's expensive postage. Um, it wasn't, nothing's landed in America yet. So I'm still very nervous about <laughs> all of them to actually. So who, who, did, who, who did you send them through? Just out of curiosity. Um, went through Sendal. So oh, we looked at Ozpost. <laughs> we looked at Ozpost. We looked at DHL. We looked at everything else. And Sendal for us was cheaper and more effective. <laughs> don't, go, don't go cheaper. Don't go cheaper. This will trigger me. Look at me going. Well, Tentacle's gone crazy now. <laughs> for us, it worked out um, a lot cheaper than Ozpost. Like it was yeah. stupid prices. And at the moment, even, even your dog's angry at you for going to Sendal. Sorry. <laughs> Even your dog's angry at you for going single. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, yeah, but so, like I said, full-time job, all right, more of a hermit than or introvert than anything else. To have the convenience of the courier come to my house and pick it up, fantastic. To have the convenience, I can, I can do it all online, which I know you can do with OzPost as well. But to have the, the tiered system, which I know OzPost has, but we are nowhere near that tiered system with what we're selling. Um, mm. it, for us at this point in time, Sendle's the way to go. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any issues with them. So, yet. As soon as stopping issues, we'll look for yeah, okay. So I will, I will hotly contest this point. Like I've been more than welcome, more than welcoming to, uh, you know, hear your point. But yeah, if if you're in America, <laughs> you might want to turn off now because this is where a disgruntled octopus comes in. Um, so if you are <laughs> from America, it, yeah, I, I suppose Sendle for us is a, a very cheap courier service, and the way that they operate is by excess capacity. So. When a courier charges, you know, hypothetically fifty dollars for a kilo or something along to that, they mainly fill up seventy five percent of that aircraft or their allocation on that aircraft. So they sell off the remaining allocation dirt cheap to Sendal, and Sendal puts it on that aircraft. So basically, for example, like you know, Jackie may have paid what's about that seven to eight dollar mark per package. Is that we would have been paying around that point? How much, sir? Seven or eight dollars. Or a bit more uh, for domestic, about yeah, seven bucks international, yes. about, uh, a bit more than that. Can't remember what yes. that is. So, realistically, from my perspective, is that I've used Sendal previously and I've had nothing but issues, and this is across the board. Like, I would strongly, you know, regardless if you're selling on eBay or you're running your own business, and this is the point that, you know, I suppose gets under my tentacles more often than not. And this is not pointed at Jackie, but <laughs> she's going to cop the brunt of it is that. What I was saying before is the customer is always the first point of call is that the, you will, for the offset of potentially saving a couple of dollars and by all means, you know, I do understand <laughs> the band system, but, you know, theoretically you should have got pretty close to getting your next band from, you know, for what you're doing through all those different things. But if you are potentially cheaping out on the postage, and this is, like I said, this is just a generalized comment, is that there's nothing will burn a customer base quicker than something going wrong in the first order. So I would be more inclined to pay that extra couple of dollars for Australia Post. And like you're saying is that, yeah, you're a hermit and all these different things. Like, and this is, you know, like Grumpy Granny cops it a fair bit is that, yeah, it's irrelevant, right? Like I, I can't, I can't sugarcoat that enough is that, realistically if you're running a business run a business don't don't make excuses for it like <laughs> so i know there's i know there's a post office where you work <laughs> so that you know maybe duck it out at lunchtime and yeah, there, there is an actually, but they, they close it down did they yeah we don't have it i oh, hear they're oh, coming okay. back but we, we, oh, okay. we, we don't have it yeah but but i oh, suppose yeah. it left. 
but but I, I suppose, like I said, that like yeah, ninety nine point nine percent of the things that I agree with Jackie and all these different things, but I can't agree with this. You know, basically, don't cheap up on the postage. But, yeah, if you have an established customer base, by all means, you send all use those different things. I know previously I've had issues with you know, other places that. Yeah, have rectified the, the issues and all those different things. But being a, a company in, a, in, in its infancy is that you don't really want to be chancing these things. Yeah, and like you said, you've got a very low count, right? So you've got 30 potential units going out, all those different things. But like I said, that really, from my ex example, if you go into Reddit, you go into you know Facebook groups, top in Sendal, and you'll exa see exactly what I'm talking about. And you don't want to chance that. So <laughs> take that into consideration. Like I said, it's up to you. Like yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force you one way or another, but like I'm saying that if anything I was cheating out on wouldn't be the supposed. <laughs> like I said, it's but, all lessons learned, right? We, we just constantly and you got to try you trial and error. Yes, obviously. Yeah, I you think enough bad points and good points, and no, again, no. that Ospost is definitely probably more reliable in that aspect, but also so bloody expensive. Um, and starting out, so once we've got our feet. A bit more firmer we'll probably look at other options as well mm. but for us this was just the the quickest and easiest way to get move forward and yeah, discuss with you good. beforehand and get the advice that you had so you let us down there probably too busy yeah. on the yeah. somewhere but um yeah that's right like like i said that you know realistically like from from my perspective i don't particularly care which business you go through but yeah if you are looking at creating a business in australia Learn, yeah, and this is going back to eBay, right? Like I tell people all the, all the way, like a lot of people go into thrift stores and buy these things and they, they sell the things that I get, a, I get a message on Instagram. It's like, how am I supposed to send this? This should be the first thing you look at before you even buy the bloody thing. Yeah, how am I going to send this thing? How much is it going to cost me to send this thing? And all these different things. Like like you're saying, people in, in especially the United States and Canada, I don't know if you've had any sales to Canada, is I, I sell Skylanders. Yeah, I'll sell a $5 Skylander and someone will pay $25 in postage for that one $5 Skylander. So people in America, if they're attached, that product yeah i know it's a bit rich to yeah compare a skylander to yeah to a product that's just launched but people are happy to pay that that 25 30 dollars postage yeah either through australia post or through sendal and all those different things um because they're, they're, they're attached to that product so it's so nerve-wracking though as well right so you come up with this idea like i said and, and you throw it out there in the world and okay what's going to happen with it and then you're like hmm. oh, are people going to actually pay for it and Oh, mm. oh, they like it. Oh, they, they do want to yeah, pay, they right. pay postage. What? Oh, this is, you know, so it's completely yeah. world. -wide. But but like I said, that yeah, you know, I was a bit apprehensive yeah. at the start, like with the, the figure. And I, yeah, if I'm going to be brutally honest, I wasn't going to purchase one originally. I purchased one because I thought, oh, yeah, I, I yeah, like I, I, I suppose I value you and Dan, you know, like, yeah, I, I'll do it just to support, if anything else, right? Like, you know, regardless if I like it or not, I'll buy it just. Yeah, it's eighty dollars once off. Yeah, I can work out from there. Yeah, like I said, that seeing the screenshots of popping up in the in the in the messenger and seeing what the product is, it's actually quite value for money. And that's yeah, you know, like I, but I was saying is that you need something to bring that mass audience in. Like you can't really, you almost like I'm saying is, and I know you, I've been checking out your website. And I know you got some lower end products as well, but I think that when you were saying a bit early before we went live is that you haven't sold the product out, and I was quite surprised by that. Is that I think that would have been a different story. And like, you know, I'm not comparing them to these things that sell out in 30 seconds and I have to get up at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> to, you know, to, to get angry about missing it out. Um, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is, I think social media is probably your biggest downfall. And I know I keep harping on it about it and I apologise, but like, no, like I said, you, just, point, you, so. you, you, need to, you need to work out what works with your schedule and what works with your personality, I so, dare say, so like... It might be just putting up memes or something along that, or yeah, building that customer awareness or finding out what your customers like. Yeah, maybe you know that they might like doing YouTube lives or yeah, you know, like I said, you start inserting yourself into you know collect collector groups and stuff along lines of this, and you know inviting yourself onto to lives like you know get Aussie Pop and Paul to do a live and introduce you to his audience and yeah you know, like introducing you to my audience and all these different things and you know like or um Dead Paul um you know hitting him up for his audience invited, and all those different things. Been Sorry, invited by Deadpool, been invited by Dead Paul, but yeah. since he's on a bit of a break at the moment, that's that's been put on pause. So yeah, um, so but yeah, and that's, that's what I'm saying is that, you know you probably want to stretch it out, and I'm quite adverse to sending out like promo packs. You know, like people go, hey, look, yeah, here's my item, I'll send it to you for free, and 
you know, you review it. Like, I, I don't find that genuine. I'd rather, you know, like I said, be invited or invite yourself uh, onto a onto a like a, a live or a YouTube thing and all these different things and just get yourself out there and you know, push it out a little bit further. So, yeah, yeah but it's good. No, but no, like I said, it's a really good product. But like I said, from your perspective, yeah, you know, and I can't comment myself because I haven't done much from a social media perspective other than <laughs> being yeah, you know, being a gigantic buffoon on on a weekly basis on YouTube. But like I'm saying, is that you probably just need to to work out what your strengths are. Like we'll talk about before, a bit of a SWOT analysis, even from across from, from a social media perspective. But I I do 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 think that um, especially if you are going to uh, New York Comic Con, and I don't know what the cash flow is like, so I'm not going to make any assumptions that say, hey, you look, you need to make 500 pins because I don't know what the cost is. And you're right, though, in the sense that you don't want to make it, you want to make it a price point where it's that that's straddling the, hey, the price is like, it's not a China's knockoff where it's not like a, a cheap pin because we don't, that kind of, we want to have that collective mindset. But you need you to bring people in. Though. Yeah, yeah you, you want to people point. in. And yeah, and, and I think we spoke about this before is that. I'm surprised that you didn't go heavier on the stickers initially just to get that cheap entry point in. Like, yeah, almost like a um, – I'm sick of bloody talking about them, but with these guys, that yeah, they drop the sticker in with their with their um, their product and what that sticker is designed to do, even though people collect the bloody thing. Yeah, it's designed to yeah to stick on laptops or <coughs> – Yeah, stick on laptops or stuff with, or like on notepads and stuff like that. So then they get free marketing because you take your laptop and it's – into school or you take your laptop into work and you've got their sticker on there and they'll ask you about, oh, what's that? Oh, it's Mischief Toys. They bring this thing out. Yeah, it's subconsciously long lines of that. So, yeah, and that's what I was surprised that, yeah, you haven't gone, I suppose, more heavier into the stickers initially, just a bit of brand image, you know, a bit of brand acknowledgement and a bit of brand recognition. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, and that could, that could solve your social media perspectives is that, you know, you say, hey, well, look, we're doing – you know, a googly-eyed contest or something, for example, for that. And we'll basically, yeah, the best one gets a sticker pack. You know, you, you, what you're losing, 5 or $10 in the grand scheme of things. You don't need to send it out by stamps, you know, three bucks worth of stamps or whatever it is. Um, and then you go your way from that way. You build your audience from that perspective. But Which, which we, is what we tried to do with um, Discord as well. So mm. I've not Discord and because we had the delay with Chinese New Year and everything else. It's, you know what? Because you're a Discord member before this certain date, we're going to send mm. you something. Just send me an email with your address. And we're going to send you something. And we sent out a uh, particular sticker that we haven't sent out anywhere else. We haven't put it for sale. And mm. it's just completely unique. And a little letter about what we are, what we're going to do, everything else. So that worked really well. We sent our first few to America. And they're like, oh, my goodness, this is awesome. You know, it was like, okay, good, good feedback from that. You know, just starting start out. Um, could have done more of that, probably. Could have done it differently. Like I said, social media, yeah. once again. Um, and, but and that's what comes to right? Like, um, yeah, so that's that's the sticker pack that you sent out there. That's on your Instagram um but yeah you're right like yeah i don't mean to keep harping on to you about your social media is but i think that it goes across the board for everyone though doesn't it like realistically you, you need that brand recognition this because <coughs> i think you know like as much as you know you're in love with your brand i like the brand you know aussie pop and paul's is creepy with the brand <laughs> like he normally is but the the, the fact of the matter is you need to push it out there a little bit further and ha and how are you going to do that for quite cost effective from that perspective so yeah but um but I, i'm looking at your uh your business plan now which is quite good i like i like it <laughs> because i keep i keep screaming at business plans yep. um that's good that's good could be a little bit a little bit more in depth for my liking but um but yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely good. But I suppose what I want to get to now before we wrap this thing up is I want to actually open up this and see what's in it. So, oh, please do, and I'll show you what's coming yeah. next. Yeah. yeah. So, like, like I said, this, um, we did do it. So this is a little um, little packing slip. That's my, my favourite thing in the in the parcel so far. So yeah, basically, my address on it, which is good. <laughs> uh, a little black box, which I don't have a scissors for, which I should have known about this beforehand. Uh, oh, there's a perforated bit on the sticker, so it's very easy to open. Oh, okay, good. And also a black padded mailer, which is good because I, black's my favourite colour. That's my name on it. Where is it? That was a special little gift for you in there. Very good. That's how it's present. Grumpy, grumpy Granny never gives me any presents. <laughs> is she also doing world domination or is it just yourself? No, just myself. Like, yeah, she she hasn't got much life left in her for world domination. So um, I think she's pretty much uh, 
yeah, so um, she's she's not feeling too well at the moment. Um, I'm not trying <laughs> to sort of speak out, of, not speak out of turn, but um, yeah, she's been letting me down because <laughs> I've had no um, like other arrangements for the podcast. So hopefully, she's feeling better soon. So well, it looks like it's a, a bottle opener. That's a bottle opener, so that's good. Like, and there's a bit of weight to this as well. It's actually oh shit, I almost dropped it and smashed my screen. But um, well, yeah, that's good. I, I like to take up some drinking now. So, what kind of alcohol do you suggest? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Don't drink alcohol. I was say, octopuses don't drink that much. So, all right. So we're opening the box now. And so it's all very prettily presented. And like, like I was saying, it's going back to what we were saying before: is that yeah, you know, like it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth the eighty dollars. So if you are in the market, I think what did you say? There's about eight left. On the website, yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, by all means, um, jump on there if you're that way inclined. Um, definitely worth the the eighty dollars. There's no dispute about that. Um, but like I was saying, if I've got to be brutally honest, I would like to see, yeah, maybe two levels. But yeah, that's yeah. something like you said, you just learn from in the future, or you know, we give you somebody a sharp and. <laughs> We're going to look at the price point and we also look, look, we're going to make it free postage for Australia as well, right? So that's all incorporated. And it's just like, yeah. to, to well, us, I, we think there's value in it, but it, it is still a, a big price point. It, we, we acknowledge yeah, that. Well, yeah, yeah, I, 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 would, I would have, like, yeah, I was brutally honest. And we have talked about your sticker prices before, right? Like, mm. your sticker prices for $3, to me, that's that's severely underpriced and i know they're only small stickers yeah they're only yeah four by four or something for lines of that um i'd probably make them five dollars then yeah that's, yeah, that, that's fine but like i'm saying is that people will buy them because they, they just want to associate with that so so what we got here we've got the stickers oh sorry the pins what? yep the pins there so oh. the three pins you're looking at um the blue one is glow the, the visor glows Right, then you've got a glitter one in the middle, and then you've got a Jesse design one that also glows. Mm. I do like the Jesse design one. Yeah, Sorry, that's, that's my favorite one. She should be designing all of our pins. <laughs> she can come and she, I'll tell you what, she can design my um, my my products if she likes, because I'm 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 hitting a um, bit of a, a, a I suppose a brain part for like a better term, but what it is. So th it's a stickers. I, I dare say I, I can't really work it out. Yeah, so <laughs> these, these eyes are painted on. <laughs> in that um, plastic envelope there, so you'll have a postcard, you'll have a trading card, mm -hmm. and you've also got a sticker sheet with five stickers on it and a loose sticker and business card. So a couple little things in there. Um, yeah. see, so the postcards we were doing are similar to these things here, right? Mm. It's just okay in different different fashions, different styles. And then there's a, a poem on the back relevant to yep. the picture on the front. Mm. Well, that's good. Uh, like I said, it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth the money for what you're getting for, for this perspective. And I do like that that this bag is that. Uh, oh, that's, that's I, the I do know. <laughs> what, what, what's that? Like just the sourcing or putting a bit? Yeah, there was an oh, issue the, with that, the product, um, which we found out after it went out. We had a friend reach out and ask about it. Um, Yep, so we've got an encapsulated trading card there. So there's only 30, but I'll have the encapsulation... To ruin the illusion. I'll have to ruin the illusion. So, yeah, you know, if you see a finger, just pretend it's a tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> With that one, I won't show the number here, but the um, the sticker, that there's clouding on it, which isn't part of yep, what yep. product is. So yep. we've offered to rectify that for people. Um, yeah, well, but like, like I was saying, is that I do think it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's got a number on the back and all these different things. So, like, yeah, um, but it, it's really worth it. Yeah, like I said, I, I like collecting those kind of things. But yeah, and it's kind of, yeah, like I said, it's definitely worth that price point. Yeah, but I, I suppose, you know, from my perspective, and I'm not trying to force it onto you, is that like, I, I think customer acquisition at the start, like, is a big thing, right? You want to try and get as many people as you're doing. But on the flip side, from I can understand where you're coming from, from like, you want to make it more exclusive, you want to do all these different things. But yeah, and that's something that I'll, I'll probably take into consideration when I roll out my products is that what what's the best way for, for your business, what best way for all those different things. And I, I do understand like a print-on-demand business, which is infinite, because I do want to bring in limited pieces. I want to bring in chase pieces, which is you know, contrary to what people are saying, is that, for example, that one of the products is going to be like a, a stock standard thing that we were talking about the other day, Jackie, but the other one, the chase edition will be glow, um, be like a glow element. So basically it'll be certain. Awesome. So yeah, so basically, I won't go into what it is, but there will yeah. be trace trace lines on that product that glow. So um, that, that's pretty that's, unique. That's awesome. 
Yeah, and, and like I said, and that might be limited to 88, right? So hmm. being an octopus, I'm quite infatuated with 88. Oh, sorry, eights. But yep. I don't want to make it a limited edition of eight <laughs> because you're <laughs> cutting yourself short. But then I don't want to make it 888. But, but like I said, it's just that all these different things that you know, I'm, I'm playing around with at the moment just to see what it is. I'm quite curious to see what's going on. But, yeah, you know, like there's a lot of stuff, and it's a lot of value worth in this thing too, and I... I'm actually surprised I held out this long to to keep it to wait to open it. To the truth, because I have seen them pop up in the uh, <laughs> in the uh, in the group chat, and I'm like, oh, I really want to want to open mine, but I don't want to ruin the illusion. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> mm. So, but um, lesson learned with the mm. bottle opener here, right? Yep. Or more of a paperweight because of the weight of it. Mm. Um, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna murder people with it. <laughs> we, we should have thought about it a bit more, which we didn't at the time. We, we just, mm. I mean, we, husband's idea to get the divisor as the actual bottle opener, which is fantastic. I remember yep. it works very well. Um, yes, anyway. but we should have made it magnetized. Yes, and, and I agree. Then we tried to rectify that when we got the product. He he bought mm. some magnets and stuff, and it just wasn't holding yes yeah, right. that's so. right so like i won't say this publicly well i will but you know hopefully aussie pop and paul's not this far into the episode but i did think he brought it up first well he was the first comment i've seen about the magnetizing and i agreed 100 percent with that because yeah. it would have been fantastic and and like i was saying is that going back to bringing more people in you know if this had been stuck in the fridge and yeah and aussie pop and paul has a couple of friends around they're like oh what's that that's cool then that that gives another piece to actually extend that that yeah, you know, that consumer base and that customer base from that perspective. So, and but I suppose as we're doing a bit of a SWOT analysis through Chat GPT, and look, I can say it properly that time. <laughs> the ex the oxygen is coming back through, but um, it actually brought up the same because <laughs> what I did is I basically said like yeah, I designed a toy based on loosely based on um, Ned Kelly, and it was coming up with all these things that you can market not only towards you know people that collect all these different things, you can also collect it yeah, market it towards people that are in the Ned Kelly space for example and all these different things so um but yeah like, like i think it's a fantastic product like yeah like i said i'm always a bit apprehensive when new things come out because i get involved in them like i get like i, I lose interest quite quickly yeah if i suppose from that perspective so yeah, you um, oh. yeah and like it's almost like it's a little bit like this this ghastly toy right like as much as i like him i like like displaying the boxes i find that like i get a little bit of like waiting around syndrome so you're waiting for that next product to drop then you kind of like forget about it and then i always get like a detachment to him then all of a sudden it gets announced that yeah then the, the hop goes back up again yeah well what, i have to go two o'clock in the bloody morning and uh <laughs> and yeah get you know get a chance to go get him for him but but like i say is that i i do like your product i, I think it's i think it's a viable product um, yeah but i, I think it's going to be having like you 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 pushing it uphill regarding <laughs> I, I think with the um and what i found from i suppose from a, a youtube perspective with it being an australian youtuber is that it's very hard to crack into the us market like you want to probably do that as one of your main priorities like and being you know i suppose an animal that's not native to america or native to you know overseas <laughs> um, you probably want to push that market a little bit further and get some interest in it from that perspective as well so um yeah but yeah i, I don't know how you could do that so <laughs> you can probably yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's gonna be our, our entry as such yeah we had a little trickle into the u.s market um when we released the ules and word of mouth but i think mm -hmm. the new york comic con will be the more of the highlight and more of the here we are this is us um and what we're, we're doing the what i was going to say before was with the Ghastlies, I, I think they're, they're very good at um, theming and everything else. And like I said, the boxes, you love the boxes, right? They're fantastic. And the product is always, to me, unique. It's like, oh, I didn't think to do it that way. That That's pretty cool. That, that, that always has me interested. Um, and I, I found with other uh, designer toys that it's pretty bland, right? Mm. So you've got the Jimmy figure. You've got the Abomal toys. They're pretty good with random. Randomly, they'll have a really good one, and then it's just – colorways and everything else and then yeah. uh dumps the fire occasionally really good and other times like what is it so i said we, we, we're only gonna do the the seven figures but for us and i'll just bring this guy up again uh the difference will be the theming will be different plus the back pocket item will constantly change as well mm. so that there will mm. be a change guaranteed in it and it's just yeah. 
the shape of it's the same, but it's still going to be that element different every time. But yeah. I, I suppose going back to this thing, right? Like I agree with the chomp. I've probably bought one or two chomps, and I'm, I'm not even remotely interested in collecting that line because I always find it quite boring. But like, yeah. and not to blow up, yeah, wind up the, the two that do these is that <laughs> a lot of a lot of these boxes haven't even been opened. <laughs> <laughs> I like the boxes, yeah. Like, but uh, yeah, like Halloween's my thing, right? So yeah, basically all the designs, you know, pretty much in line with what I'm, I'm, I suppose I'd be very similar to you know to Chris, that yeah, the co-founder of the products. Like, I love zombies, I love Halloween, I love demons, and all those different things. So they're right, my alley. Um, but yeah, as what they found with the black metal one, oh, yeah. you know, having a, a 666 count was that, yeah, a lot of people didn't gel with that, which is quite surprising because I couldn't get my head around that because it's a it's a demon. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, it's the theme, right? It's, yeah, it's that's the a, exactly. A lot of people can't detach it. And yeah, this is like going back to what, what we were saying before is because, yeah, like a couple of times I was going to jump in there and, you know, let loose with, you know, my, my thoughts <laughs> in in respect to, you know, how, I won't say how dumb people were being, but, you know, how ignorant they were <laughs> with, you know, like looking at the bigger picture kind of thing. But, but like I was saying is that you can't really do that being, yeah you know, someone because it could be taken in the wrong context or, yeah, you can overstep your mark and all these different things. But I definitely do think that, you know, as much as, you know, I know some people say that, you know, it's a, a colorway or a different, you know, kind of thing they've been quite smart with it yeah like actually i haven't come across, yeah i haven't come across one that i don't like you know like i said that um all the boxes are unique which i think fantastic i, I love the boxes and yeah I, i've told heather numerous times just tell me the boxes <laughs> like you can keep the bloody figure just tell me the boxes you have to black, uh, black gargoyle box and i'll have the gargoyle itself that yeah cool. yeah that's right like i said that all i just got i've got a cover display to them so and by no means we, we, we um, <laughs> sponsored by the guest of castle or uh, mischief toys either but but like i'm saying is that if you are going to I suppose I'll wrap it up soon because, yeah, Jackie's probably going to die coughing up a lung in a second. But what it comes down to, if you are moving into a category or a um, a niche, I suppose, like such as designer toys, have some sort of interest in that. Like, yeah, be, have interest, have some background into it. Like just for me, for example, if I was to bring out an octopus figure, I'd be screwed because I wouldn't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> and like, I don't, I'm not an avid collector enough to... Yeah, I only collect this pretty much this line and a couple of yeah, maybe Krampus Funko Pops. That's pretty much the extent of my collection. But um, yeah, like I don't collect enough product to know the, the durability or the consistency or the, the, the even the makeup of all these different things. So, mm-hmm. like I was saying, is that you need if you are looking into doing it, make sure that you have an affinity to it. Like if you're a collector, you might want to yeah make your own product, go from there. Um, and all those different things, you know, just reach out, talk to the community. Like I said, if you are interested in building a business, um, do check out the Mischief Toys, you know, podcast. It's I, I'll put it in the description field below because it is fantastic. I quite enjoyed that. Um, but, yeah, so, Jackie, before you want to go, is, is there anything else you want to bring up or snippets or teasers gonna... instead of coming up? <laughs> I'll show you the pins that are coming out shortly. Um I was going to show the 3D modeling picture, but I can't get it to work on my side. So I might show you that another time. But these are the pins that we're going to bring out very shortly. I'm just not, they're not attached. Oh, very to nice. So, yes, these three look the same as what you've just got, but they're not. Yeah, but bigger. So, not, no, sorry, not glitter, not glow, and not glow. Hmm. And then obviously we have our OG RK and our Lost in Time RK. Yeah. Now, if you um, look at it a bit clearer, <laughs> You might see yeah. some elements there that you recognise as well. Yeah. We call it Lost in Time. Yeah. And our original guy here. They'll be coming out shortly. But the, but the, the fact of the matter is, right, like, so those original three pins to the bottom, what's the, are they limited or are they kind of a generic piece these count? Are, these are all limited except for mm. um, this one will be our common, always available. Yep. All right. And yep. I think, yeah, we made so everything else is uh, limited to 100, right? So they'll be on there for yep. a while. Um, yeah, but the thing is, so, that's, that's just going to be on the yeah. Page. So the, the, the other three that you've already rehashed, right? So the ones you've already done before is that there's only 30 of the alternatives of those pins out there. So, yeah, Correct. realistically, yeah, it doesn't really matter that too much of a, a, a case point. So, so the difference as well with, with uh, this one, um, mm-hmm. I'll put this one up. Is actually put some oil underneath the uh, epoxy or whatever yep. they use to make it more shiny, which mm. you don't have normally. So that they're a bit unique that way, you know, a bit different. 
Um, they wouldn't have known that. So this is a, I, I, I would love to make pins because, yeah, like I said, that I, I quite like the the different things you could do with them. But yep. to me, I don't know what to do with pins. I'm not a pin collector, <laughs> which I've said numerous times. It's like stop sending me pins, like. <laughs> <laughs> Else. <laughs> like, all right, I'll give you a quick little lesson on this on thingy. So soft epoxy hmm. or soft, soft enamel, sorry, not epoxy, soft enamel. Um, hard enamel be completely flat. Okay. This is a print. So obviously there's way too much detail in that for it to be um, made like this one was yep. made. That's okay, right. yep. there's too much stuff in there. And then is it the difference between these two is that is flat because it's a print and then they put oil and then they put the um, thingy on it, whereas this mm. is just painted in into the model. <laughs> so, yeah, they're a bit different. There's no, some different, different elements to them. Um, yeah, look, I, I, just, I, I suppose I just don't know how to display them. <laughs> <laughs> That's my biggest thing with pins is that my, all, of, all the pins that I've got from you know, these guys here are just in a little, <laughs> in a little Ziploc bag in the, in the cupboard just gathering dust because I have no idea what to do with them. Yeah, we've got a bit of a plan for, for ours. Um, mm -hmm. I just haven't been able to find the right place to get made what I see in my head, if that makes sense. So, no, right. Right. yeah, I, I, I think I, I'm, pick, I'm picking up what you're putting down. So, but um, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. it's good to see. Like I said, that I really sincerely do hope that you succeed with it. Like, like I said, that I know the odds are probably stacked against you because yeah, the business is ruthless. Like, let's face it, right? It's, it's about time in the world as well. Let's be honest. That's right, and and that's quite of why I've probably hesitated a little bit rolling it out because I've even from my, you know, my side hustle per se, which is eBay, um, I've noticed a very acute slowdown in that respect. So, like, <clears throat> excuse me. So, for those that are playing at home and are still watching it, one hour and forty four minutes <laughs> into the into the stream is that. I'm, I'm funneling, you know, eBay funds into this side venture to, you know, to do the, the products that I'm doing. So I don't want to make it. Um, and what I was saying to Jackie before is that I think you're living in a fool's world if you think you're going to make a multi-billion dollar business on the zero dollars. Like, you know, you need to have some sort of cash injection at the start. Don't have thousands and thousands of dollars, whatever you do. But, you know, you probably get away with a couple hundred dollars and, you know, build your way out from there. But realistically, don't try and start a $0 challenge because you'll probably be at the same place 12 months' time. <laughs> like, you, you need to be very mindful of that. So do have a little bit of capital to start with. Um, but, yeah, it just, maybe just sell, you know, two or three products and print on demand, you know, like from what we are talking about is perfect because like Jackie said earlier is that you're, you're not doing the initial outlay. You're just basically, you're scooping the money off the top, what the difference is between the price of the item and what the, what's actually costing you. Um, but, yeah, but like I'm saying is that, I'm going to sound like a, a broken, broken record octopus here, but definitely, definitely, definitely set yourself some goals with social media. Is that I don't know how what suits you and obviously what you know what you want to get out of it and how you want to do it. And I can't tell you because there's no use me giving you a, a social media outline. <laughs> then yeah, it's not it's not in line with your product or your brand or the way that you perform. But but if you want my brutal honest opinion, and you're going to get it anyway, is that like you're saying is that jump on lives jump on you know um you know jump on you know like chat shows which you know people in the community and all these different things so like dead paul and you know get aussie pop and paul out of retirement and all these different things because but yeah paul you know he's got a, a customer base of a thousand uh subscribers you know he like he has about routinely about 300 people that watch his show so that's you know potentially opening it up to 250 people that don't know who the hell you are kind of thing um and yeah and, and youtube's forever so yeah realistically you know maybe two years down the track someone comes across and they, they find it through an old video and all those different things like dead paul with you know with steph i'm not too sure if what their <laughs> their situation is at the moment but <laughs> when, like, when the business, I'll, I'll be on there Live. But that's what I'm saying. But yeah, with Steph, you've got that the you got the US market. So but like I was saying, it's, it's definitely, definitely, definitely a good product. And I can see longevity with it, but it's definitely that you the, the biggest thing that's you know jeopardizing your business at the moment is probably that social media aspect. But like I said, I, I, I honestly don't have other than you know getting yourself out there and you know showing the world who you are and what you you're portraying and what you're pushing out and all these different things. Yeah, a lot of the product sound, you know. I'd like to see a bit of more of a fleshed out story. I know you want the mysteriousness of it, all those different things, and you could still maintain that and just flesh it out, make yeah. it like more intriguing, more interesting. Like, yeah, drag people in from that, especially if they don't know who Ned Kelly is. Maybe have on your website like a link that goes to his Wikipedia page or the Ned Kelly Museum or something along, like give it some real world, almost like like a Blair Witch, <laughs> yeah, that, that Blair Witch marketing system where they had basically all that stuff going behind the scenes as well. So, 
-hmm. but um but curious to see how it all progresses and i um waited with uh baited octopus breath for the next pin drop <laughs> <laughs> and uh but yeah no, like i said they'd be, be curious to yeah and, and it's a it's a visibility into the whole process because like i said that I'm surprised it takes 18 months for the generation of a figure. Like, yeah, like, I, I don't have the patience for that. It probably won't, but I'm being realistic as how long it's going to take us to get out. But, yeah, but that's right. Find the time but, and everything yeah. else. So, but yeah, yeah and, but even listening to, you know, like these guys is that, yeah, they say oh, we've engaged that figure like 12 months ago or, yeah, 14 months ago and all these different things. Yeah, like where, yeah, you know, for someone that's external to it, and like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a big collector by any means. Um, I, I more collect retro video games. <clears throat> and, yeah, like I don't have no visibility or no concept of what what goes in behind the scenes for these things because I'm always constantly in awe. And yeah, like I was saying before, is I, I love the business perspective and I love what goes behind the scenes opposed to all what the end product is. <laughs> so it's like we, we've already got um, with our artist, we've got I think six or seven variations already drawn up. I've only mm. shown two, you know, so we've already got these things all sorted, and there's just trying to be ahead those couple of months okay in a couple of months we want to do this so we need to see so constantly playing this game like okay reinvest money all that kind of stuff and, and plan forward it, it it's exhausting to try and keep working out how many are we going to release yeah. but well, and, and that, well, that's exactly right and that's i suppose go back to the cash flow thing is that something we didn't really touch that much on is that i suppose my cash flow if i was in your situation and by all means that the way that i'll be doing it is that selling very low cost items to generate quick cash, right? So like stickers and you know, like stuff on the lines of that. So hey, look, <laughs> you know, um, because well, I'm not saying I'm not the well, yeah, you know, most well known YouTube celebrity, but yeah, you know, I in certain circles, yeah, you know, people know who I am. So therefore, mm -hmm. I could probably flog off some stickers a lot quicker than you know, for example, someone in your situation at this stage. But that could like yeah, you know, like I said, it, all it takes is one viral video, one viral <laughs> um, TikTok, and then yeah, you know, then you're off and going. So. Yep. Oh, she's back. She's gone again. She's running away. <laughs> do you want to say hello, yeah. Jesse? Hello. Hello. Do you, to, do you want to say hello? Do you want to say hello to the people on the internet? I think uh, Uncle uh, Uncle Poppy Paul, uh, Aussie Pop and Paul, will be watching. Give everyone away. Say hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you know what Octo likes best? What? Your colours. <laughs> I thought you were going to say taking over the world. <laughs> but yes, your colours are the close well. second. I don't know if you can see it, it even has colours by Jesse. No, oh, it looks good. Like, so. I do I do like your uh, your pin, Jesse. I, I think you did a really good job with that. So you should I think you should take care of the um the future releases, I think. Mm. <laughs> the dogs do it. But anyway, but thank you very much, Jackie, for coming on. I know you're sick and um yeah, but like I said, that you you copied you copped a bit of a tongue lashing regarding Sendel, but <laughs> I'm going to die on that okay. hill. I'm going to die okay. on that hill. I can tell you right now. But but um but yeah, like I said, that thank you very much for coming on and give us an indication of what goes into the I suppose the business and all those different things from your perspective and what you've learnt in that respect. So it's good to yeah you know, take into consideration about your pins and all those different things because you know, like I said, that people don't know they just what I find on YouTube what will happen is that you'll have an influencer with a hundred thousand views. So, Hey, look, do print on demand or do pins. And yeah, this is a passive income, but people don't really see the back end of it. <laughs> like they just think that they just, yeah, watch a 20 minute video. Then they press a button and all of a sudden get the, the millionaire. So, which doesn't happen. So yep. <sighs> anyway, but thank you very much for coming on and um, for me. that's all right. But like I said, definitely get onto your social media. I'll have to come after you. I know, yeah. I don't know where you live, but I'll find out. <laughs> find, I know you'll find me. It's easy enough to find me. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, but thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, Octo. See ya.